What is going on, everybody? Estas here. So the markets had a pretty decent day today. We had the S&P and the Dow up 0.4%. The NASDAQ 100 went down 0.1%, but it's okay because the Russell 2000 went up 0.6%. So today, we're going to break down some stocks, some charts, my thoughts on the markets. You guys know the drill. So sit back, relax, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon down below if you guys want my real-time buys, sells, call-outs, morning update videos, plus more. All of that's on Patreon. Again, link down below. And with that being said, let's get the party started, guys. So at this point, if you've been watching the markets, if you've been listening and tuning in to my videos, whether it's on Patreon or here on YouTube, you know the markets have been breaking out. SPY is now trading at a three-week high. It's trading above both moving averages, and we've recently broken out of the high from about three weeks ago, from the end of September in 2021. And at this point in time, we're well on our way to test the all-time highs, being 454.53, and we might even break those all-time highs, whether it's tomorrow, next week, maybe the week after, who knows? I think we're well on our way, though, to test those highs and maybe even break out of them. And I don't want to beat a dead horse because, honestly, not much has changed, technically speaking, here on SPY. Uh, but all you guys need to know is, yeah, yeah, the Bulls are crushing it. Overall, we're looking very green. And one thing here that I want to talk about, not on SPY, but on QQQ, since QQQ is in a little bit of a pickle, um, and it's it's in a different spot than uh, SPY, let's pull it up. You guys can see QQQ, unlike SPY, has not broken out of the high point from about three weeks to a month ago, being 375. In fact, we closed under that point today, eh, barely, I mean, two cents under 375. And uh, yesterday, we were wrestling with 375 as well here on the four-hour chart. And like I said, it's not breaking above that point like SPY is clearly breaking above the point from the end of September. So for these next couple of days, I'm going to be monitoring QQQ here, right? Do we break 375? clearly see a leg up and start pushing 380 or do we end up collapsing under 375 which now after market hours i'm noticing um qqq is selling down a bit it's at 374.40 um do we collapse under 375 start going down to 366 367 right around the moving averages on the four hour chart. That's kind of what I'm looking for here um, overall in QQQ. But it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell you guys that the markets overall, despite the fact that QQQ isn't breaking 375, the markets overall, they're doing quite well. They've been rebounding. And the past couple of days, they've been very green. So overall, markets still look bullish right now. I'm going to be watching QQQ. 375 and for spy i'm going to be looking to see whether or not we break the all-time highs do we get rejected at all-time highs and start coming back down to 446 447 that's kind of what i'm watching out for so let me know your thoughts down below in the comments are you bullish bearish are you buying selling what the heck are you doing guys let me know in the comments and make sure to hit the like button as always if you guys find value in my videos i appreciate each and every one of you guys out there and let's talk about some stocks because we know oh man we know that earnings season is upon us and today we have something to talk about we had tesla report lamb research ibm we had Verizon report in the morning, and a lot of other companies reported, but those are the four that we're going to talk about in this video, plus three other stocks towards the end of the video, so make sure you guys stick on throughout. So Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA, arguably the most anticipated company out there in terms of earnings reports. Let's see what they did. Um, and first and foremost, before we even look at their earnings, which I do have some notes here on my iPad, guys, and the way I set up my videos, um, if you guys want to know a little uh, behind the scenes, is I have my iPad right here. 
I take notes, obviously, for every video, and uh, I kind of look at the screen, at Thinkorswim, and then I look at my iPad over here. I have my phone over here if I want to pop up Coinbase and see how uh, the crypto market is doing, which we'll talk about in a second here. But first, we got to talk Tesla. So this ended up going up 0.2% at the close, which is really nothing. And if I pop up the intraday chart, let's see what it's looking like after market hours. Very volatile, as expected, right? Tesla closed at 865. It popped up to 875, dropped down to 853. Now we're pretty much consolidating at about 863, a little bit under that closing price. So what did they report? They did EPS of $1.86. And you guys remember, Remember when Tesla was not profitable? Um, I sure do, but now, hey, they're profitable. They did $1.86 EPS versus $1.61 estimated, so a nice beat on EPS. And revenue came in at $13.75 billion versus $13.7 billion estimated. So double beat, EPS beat, revenue beat. I can't complain. And another thing that I saw when I was taking my notes here, and we'll see if any other notes or um, key points popped up here on the live news tab in a second. We uh, we now know, and we kind of knew this already, especially those of us that track the company. Um, they're guiding for multi-year horizon, a multi-year horizon achieving 50% average annual growth in vehicle delivery. So in other words, that means pretty much every year they're going to be seeing for the next couple of years, multi-year horizon, they're expecting 50% um, average growth in vehicle delivery. So for example, that would be, uh, I might butcher this math. So let's say they do a million, um, let's say they do a million deliveries this year. The next year they'll do 1.5. The next year they'll do, you know, 50% growth every year. And, and I'm going to butcher the math, but you guys know what I mean, which, which is a good sign here. And they're also expecting operating margin um, to continue to grow, which is also a good sign. And let's see here exactly if there's anything else. Um, revenue up 57%. I'm assuming that's year over year. That's good. Model Y production on track, which is also good. I saw something about the Berlin factory here when I was doing uh, my little note taking before the video. Let me see here. Tesla continues to target first Model Y production builds in Berlin and Austin before the end of the year, which is a very good sign. And Tesla, semiconductor shortages, congestion at ports, and rolling blackouts have been impacting ability to keep factories running at full speed, which makes sense. They're seeing a short-term hiccup here, as a lot of companies are out there. Let's be honest, this is affecting not only Tesla, but many companies. We can go on and on and on about that, which we're not going to talk about in this video. So pretty nice beat for Tesla, guys. I might make a video tomorrow, maybe not going deeper into the earnings, but for now, that's what we're going to go over. EPS beat, revenue beat, they're looking for multi-year horizon, uh, multi-year horizon growth of 50% plus or more, which is great. Operating margins looking to grow. I can't complain. As a Tesla shareholder, I cannot complain. And uh, the stock's not doing much. So at this point, it is a bit overbought. We got to be honest with ourselves here. You know, sure, it could go to 900 plus tomorrow, maybe the, uh, next week. That's very possible. What the heck day is it today? Is today Wednesday? Yeah, I thought it was Thursday for a second. So we have two more days of trading. Um, so maybe we go 900 tomorrow, the next day. I don't know, uh, but I would like to see it cool off a bit, quite honestly. Considering the RSI is overbought on the four-hour chart, maybe Tesla starts coming down, um, you know, mid-800. Well, it already is technically mid-800s at 860. Maybe it comes down to 820, 830, right around this 50 moving average on the four-hour chart. That, in my opinion, could end up being a decent um, dip buy. But as always... As always, please, guys, do your own research, do your own due diligence. I'm not a financial advisor. You must always, always, always make your own decisions on your own based on your analysis, your research, and your own decision making, right? So let's go over LAM research, ticker symbol LRCX. Let's pop it up. This stock went down 1% at the close. And after hours, <laughs> after hours, guys, 
Whew, it's looking a bit rough. It's down 20 bucks after hours, which for a $500 stock, it's not the end of the world, but still, it's down about 5%, um, which again, is not the end of the world, but it makes sense considering they missed revenue. Um, revenue came in at $4.3 billion versus $4.32 billion estimated, so a very slim miss on revenue, but EPS beat. They did $8.32 EPS versus $8.21 estimated, and revenue for Q4 in terms of guidance is in line with the estimate. So I'm assuming LRCX and in, in, um, in terms of this after hours drop is dropping because of the missed revenue. Um, and, and, and maybe I'm missing something here. Let's see here. Um, let's see, guys. I'm not necessarily missing anything. Maybe I am. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But I'm assuming that they're dropping because of that missed revenue. And overall, the chart now with the uh, the 20 buck drop after hours, we are testing the bottom of this downwards channel, which we've been downtrending. If you guys didn't know, if you didn't catch the memo from my previous video that I talked about L uh, LRCX, we've been downtrending pretty much this whole year, ever since uh, March of 2021, which at this point was almost seven, eight months ago. Um, so yeah, I want to see if we end up seeing some sort of relief rally once the dust settles here at about, let's say, 530, 540. I think that's possible considering every time, at least in the past couple of months, We've dropped down and tested the bottom of this channel literally every time we've uh, we, we've bounced back. So just because they missed revenue doesn't mean I'm throwing the stock out the window, guys. Um, but I am I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it. And uh, it's not at the top of my priority list in terms of stocks that I want to get into, um, but but it's definitely on my watch list still. So we're going to be watching it. I'm going to put an alert. Actually, let's let's put an alert. Hmm, maybe at 550. I'll put an alert on this one. So keep your eyes out on it, guys. Mark is at or above 550. There we go. IBM, which I know, I know, it's not the sexiest company out there, guys. Far from it. Uh, but they reported earnings today as well. EPS came in at two dollars and fifty-two cents versus two fifty estimated. So they beat EPS. Revenue on the flip side, though. Did not beat. Revenue came in at $17.6 billion versus $17.77 billion estimated. So a pretty decent miss there on revenue. And this is looking very similar, the, the pattern that is, very similar to what we just saw with Lamb Research. You guys saw Lamb Research was downtrending within the downwards channel the past couple of months. Well, IBM is doing the same thing pretty much since May of 2021. IBM has been making lower lows, lower highs, and now that we're dumping about six bucks after market hours, which in percentage terms, that is roughly a five, six percent drop. We're uh, we're continuing the trend, right? We're actually pushing for a lower low. We're probably going to test the low 130s, which at that point, like Lamb Research, we're going to be overbought, or rather oversold, if I can get my terms correct today, guys. <laughs> We're going to be oversold, and I think buyers could potentially step in there. Maybe we see some sort of relief rally, considering it's already very oversold. I mean, look at the RSI. It's at 22 here on the four-hour chart. So IBM, although it's not at the top of my watch list, there's probably a couple more stocks above IBM for me on my watch list. Um, I'm not throwing it out the window. I think there is opportunity there in the short term for a relief rally. Again, same with Lamb Research. And let's talk a little bit about Apple. I know I've been talking about Apple a lot recently, but we got some news around their estimates today for their upcoming earnings report, which is in eight calendar days from now. Or what is that next Thursday, which I'm very excited about considering I do own Apple as a long term investment. I've owned it on and off for years. I remember I think the first time when's the first time I bought Apple? I forget. But, you know, this is one that I owned years ago. I think I sold. Yeah, I definitely sold out of it. I bought back in, which I really should have never sold out in the first place, considering we're at all time highs right now. So I really just sold out. And uh, I paid the taxes when I just should have held on, but we won't get into that. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys have done that before as well, where you buy a stock, you hold it for two, three years, 
you get out of it, you pay your taxes, the stock goes down a little bit, you get back in it, and here we are. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys have uh, you know done that, but again, earnings are coming out here in about eight calendar days, and exactly eight calendar days, and Apple is expected to exceed the Q3 street estimates across the board when it reports its results, driven, strong, uh, driven by strong global I- iPhone 13 demand, which honestly, guys, from what I was reading, what I've been seeing... The iPhone 13, it's uh, pretty identical to this phone right here. Let me show you guys my phone iPhone 12, um, iPhone 12 Pro. And the thing is, I feel like every year, um, the iPhone, it gets slightly better, but the biggest sell I always see is, oh, the camera's better, the camera's better. Um, Which, me, I'm not a photographer, guys. I don't really care that much about the camera as long as it's decent, which this one's incredible. Um, I don't see the reason to upgrade, but, and that's for me, but I know a lot of, there, there's a lot of fanboys and fangirls out there of Apple, which will buy up the, um, you know, the iPhone 13 regardless, you know, we, we'll see that. Um, we'll see how the numbers come out in the earnings report, but overall we know this guys, come on. There's a huge cult around Apple and, uh, I don't think there's a big difference between the 12 and the 13, but that doesn't mean that my opinion is everybody's opinion because it's just my opinion, and we'll see what their earnings are. I'm sure the uh, 13 will do well. Um, and let me tell you guys, I used to have the uh, I used to have the iPhone 8, and man. The 8 to the 12, now that is a big jump. I typically get the new phone um, every two years, maybe two, three years. So I'm going to skip the 13. I'll probably go for the 14 or the 15. Um, We'll see how it goes. Uh, But from 12 to 13, from what I've been seeing... Not too big of a difference, but again, we'll see the earnings. And the street estimates estimates that the iPhone maker will report Q3 earnings of $1.23 per share and revenue of close to $85 billion. And that's coming from Wedbush analyst da- Daniel Ives and John Katz- Katzingris. Maybe he's, is he Greek? He might be Greek. That sounds like a Greek last name. I should know because I'm Greek. Um, he said that in a Wednesday note, and they believe that a likely $1 billion plus beep driven by the iPhone 13 launch will naturally be the focal point of uh, investors. So we'll see, guys. I'm very excited about Apple. Um, again, I'm long Apple, and it's technically, technically speaking, it's breaking out. We're moving above both moving averages, and recently, we've actually taken out the 180 moving average on this four-hour chart. So we got to see if this continues, maybe up to all-time highs heading into earnings or even after earnings. I think it's possible. Um, let's take a look at Verizon. They did EPS of a dollar forty-one versus a dollar thirty-six estimated, which beat revenue came in at thirty-two point nine billion versus thirty-three point two eight billion, which did not beat. And this looks like the pattern that we saw with Lamb Research and IBM. But the flip side here is, um, or, or the, uh, the the difference here, shall I say, is Verizon's actually ripping on these earnings while Lamb. And IBM, they tanked. And uh, Lamb and IBM are heading towards the bottom of the channel, while uh, Verizon is heading towards the top of the channel. So we'll see what happens here, guys. I'm going to put my alert at 54 bucks. I wouldn't rush into Verizon here by any stretch of the imagination. But if it breaks 54, the top of the channel, and the 180 SMA, and starts getting out of this downtrend that we've been in for months then we might see a bit of a reversal. So those are the four earnings reports that came out today, excluding Apple, because they report in about a week from now. And let's go over two more stocks. Let me know down below in the comments, guys. If you stuck till the end, let me know, as always, eBay, ticker symbol E-B-A-Y. Somebody commented on my video earlier today about eBay. And leave me a comment if you guys want me to cover any specific stock. I'll go through the comments and I'll look at the stocks. If I see value in them and the charts look good, I'll cover them here on the uh, on the channel. So drop me a comment. Let me know if you stuck till the end and what tickers you want me to talk about. Um, eBay looks pretty good. It's breaking out of the moving averages, breaking out of the wedge here. And we're noticing an inverse head and shoulder, the left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And today we had about a 1.7% green day. And if this uh, inverse head and shoulder plays out, we're going 78, no problem, which was the all-time high from the end of August. So at this point, 
Now that we're at 76 bucks, roughly, I think there is a little bit more juice left in this rally, especially since we broke out of the highs um, from last week and the week before. We're now trading at multi-week highs. And again, that, now that we're trading above the moving averages, inverse head and shoulders, all that good stuff, I think eBay's going higher. I think it could even break 78. I think a big breakout um, into the 80s could be coming for the stock for the first time ever. I don't think this stock has ever been 80+. plus. No, it hasn't. Um, so keep your eyes out on eBay. CRM's another one which has been very, very hot recently. And just today, or not today, uh, but the past couple of trading days, CRM has broken out of this ascending triangle, which... Guys, not to toot my own horn, but who called it out? We called it out. I, I guess I called it out since I'm a, a one-man show here on the YouTube channel. But I like to you know, consider us a community. That's why I say we. Uh, but you know what I mean, right? Um, this broke out of about 280, which was the high point from uh, August 2020. And like I said, once the ascending triangle plays out, we see a leg up. There could be an explosion, and that is kind of what we're seeing here on uh, CRM, right? We hit an all-time high of 295, and if I pop up the four-hour chart, it's pulling back a bit. It hit 295. Now we're at 288. So I want to see if we could pick up CRM maybe on some weakness, whether it's 280, 270, 275. I want to see if this uh, dip gets bought up. And of course, maybe, I'm not sure 100% yet, but if we do pull back, I will be maybe putting some money into CRM. We'll see how that goes, guys. So overall, that's it for this video. We're about 22 minutes in. Perfect timing. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and let me know if you guys stuck till the end. And don't forget to drop some tickers down below that you want me to talk about. And check out my Patreon. If you guys want my real-time buy, sells, call-outs, morning update videos, plus more, literally all the moves I make from options, trades, long-term investments, and I made a lot of moves today. Everything I do is on Patreon, link down below, or you guys can go to stotsurfest.com slash Patreon if you want to join. And make sure to also get your free money from M1 Finance and from Webull, and that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'll pop up a video here to check out. I'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching again. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out.